And good evening. We're doing it live right here weeknights in the 5 o'clock hour in Los Angeles. Motec on Money, five nights a week for you, live right here in 790 KBC, streaming live for you online worldwide at kbc.com and the on-demand Motec on Money podcast at kbc.com, Apple iTunes, and all your favorite podcast platforms. Good evening. You see that double rainbow out there tonight? Keep looking up. Los Angeles stocks closing mostly lower today, but uh, we're still poised for their best month of gains this year. We did see uh, Treasury bond yields pull back a bit. Investors hope the Fed will end rate cuts and maybe already rate ended rate cuts. The Dow up 13 points. The S&P 500 down four. The Nasdaq down 23 points. The Dow had been higher by about 150 points earlier. Stocks did turn lower late in the session after the Fed's uh, so-called Beige Book survey of various uh, Fed districts and economic conditions around the country showed mostly weaker economic activity, easing demand for labor from a month ago. We did see uh, stocks rally earlier after a report showed the economy grew at a rate of 5.2 percent in the third quarter. That reading came in above expectations. Despite the mixed economic reports, the uh, stock averages still on pace for their best monthly gains of the year this month of November. We have one more trading day left tomorrow for the month of November 2023. Tomorrow is already November 30th. We are seeing uh, some movers today, including General Motors stock up nearly 10 percent after the company unveiled plans to reward its shareholders. Now that labor strikes are out of the way, GameStop, one of the meme stocks, up 20 percent today after individual investors piled into uh, long shot call options for that video game retailer reigniting a rally in its shares, according to Market Watch. We also saw a rally in the price of gold hitting the highest scene since the pandemic year 2020. Right now, gold is hovering at $2,067 an ounce. The price of oil is at a two-week high of $1.45 at 77.86 a barrel. We see the yield in the 10-year note, which impacts the fixed-rate mortgage rates out there, now at 4.25%. It was up around 5% not too long ago, and that had the mortgage rates at 23-year highs. Interesting uh, conference going on here in Los Angeles at the uh, New York Times uh, Business Conference. Robert Iger, the Disney chief executive, said over the summer that the company would consider selling its ABC network and other properties, but he said today that they were not for sale. According to the New York Times, statements about the prospect of offloading media properties were meant to remind investors that the company was willing to consider bold deals, he said. Some other big names are speaking here in Los Angeles, and we heard uh, at the top of the hour the uh, comments made by uh, Elon Musk uh, directed toward uh, Robert Iger and, and others. Coming up later this hour, we'll get right down to business with Mark Wilbur, the founding member and former chairman of L.A. BizFed, the Los Angeles Business Federation, president and CEO of Employers Group and former associate dean of the USC Marshall School of Business. A homeowner is shot and killed in his own home in the Mid-Wilshire area of Los Angeles. The suspect arrested in that case, a homeless woman who is now being held on murder charges with bail set at $3 million. Elsewhere, a woman was dragged 50 feet during an attempted perch snatching at a Costco in the city of industry. I'll discuss the latest crime reports tonight with the Honorable Dennis Zine, former L.A. City Council member, longtime LAPD sergeant and current LAPD reserve officer with more than 55 years of service to the City of Angels. But first, on your money, the markets, the economy, the beige book and the whole works tonight. Joining us live now, Ben Stein for our occasional Frankenstein conversation here. Ben Stein, financial and political commentator. Author of numerous books. Uh, I don't think he authored the Beige Book, though, but I'll ask him in just a second. Lawyer, economist, actor, too, famous for playing himself, basically, in the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off. We'll ask him to take the role uh, later this uh, hour. Ben Stein, thank you very much for coming to the line here this evening. I'm honored to be here, as always. Thank you always. very much. Thank you, sir. We, we, are, we appreciate it and uh, always love our Frankenstein conversations. Uh, Give us your view of the world. Do you see the, that double rainbow out there, first of all? Uh, that's making big news here this I evening. Am, uh, I am blessed beyond words because I am uh, at our house in Malibu, and uh, the view out over the sky is simply unbelievable, beautiful, magnificent, uh, breathtaking, and uh, I'm very glad I'm here and not uh, anywhere else right now. It's just it's hard to believe it could, could be real, but it is. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, well, Ben Stein, let me ask you this. Um, you probably heard the reports uh, at the top of the hour, and uh, looks like uh, the U.S. military uh, shooting down a, a drone uh, launched from Yemen today, according to the U.S. military, and the latest in a series of threats from Iranian-backed Houthi rebels. We're watching, of course, all the developments in the Middle East, a focus on 
the Israel war with Hamas following the terror attack uh, on Israel last month. Uh, give us your view of how this is all uh, playing out there. Well, the behavior of the, uh, how, who's the user, or however they pronounce, is outrageous. It's astonishing to me that uh, the Biden administration is not uh, striking back wholeheartedly at, uh, against these people who are just uh, not nice people. They're uh, well armed, of course, by the Iranians and really, I guess, originally by the Russians and the North Koreans. Uh, but wow, I mean, if we, if we have the biggest military in the world, and we are letting ourselves get pushed around by these punks. Uh, there's something seriously wrong with leadership in this country. I, don't, I think we have very good weapons. I think we have very good men and women serving in the trenches, so to speak. But uh, the leadership is very poor. And I guess I don't understand something even more basic, Frank, which is uh, we, we uh, were part of a group that signed on for uh, a ceasefire and uh, – it was quite a sacrifice by the Israelis to say, well, we won't fight you again for a while, even though we're very much on top in the war. Uh, and but, but meanwhile, the uh, rebels, the Iranians uh, and th their friends are still attacking U.S. forces and still firing rockets into downtown Tel Aviv. And uh, we're expecting uh, either the U.S. nor the Israelis to fight back. I, I I guess I just don't get it. So uh, you and I have been on together for a long, long time, decades. And uh, I, you know, and I know we follow history. Uh, when countries let themselves get pushed around, uh, nothing good comes of it. Nothing good is going to come of letting the United States of America, the mightiest power on earth, be pushed around by dinky little evil countries. countries uh, what good can come of it? I mean, Winston Churchill wouldn't have allowed it. Uh, Frank and D. Rosa wouldn't have allowed it. Why are we allowing it? Let's add Harry S. Truman to the mix uh, as well. On the air live with Ben Stein. And, and let me repeat these uh, bulletins uh, coming across here from the Middle East. A uh, U.S. Navy warship sailing near the Bab el Mandeb Strait shot down a drone launched from Yemen today, according to the U.S. military, and the latest string of threats from the Iranian-backed rebels. Now, this shootdown, by the way, coming a day after an Iranian drone flew within 1,500 yards of the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower aircraft carrier as it was conducting flight operations in international waters in the Arabian Gulf. And earlier this month, another Navy destroyer, the USS Thomas Hudner, shot down a drone that was heading toward that ship as it sailed in the southern Red Sea. It was near the Bab el Madeb Strait, and it shot down the drone over water. So we are following these uh, developments uh, very closely and, and certainly very significant uh, with uh, tensions running uh, as high as they are at the moment. What is the point of what we're doing? That's what I keep asking. Winston Churchill, at the beginning of the Blitz, uh, was asked by certain people, uh, why don't you uh, forget, forgive the Germans for bombing London, bombing Liverpool, bombing Edinburgh, bombing everybody they were bombing, and just have a back down of everybody. And Winston Churchill said, we will not back down until Hitler and his evil gang have suffered every bit as much as we have suffered. We are not going to rest until we have turned every one of their cities into rubble, just as they have tried to turn London into rubble. We are not going to be pushed around, and we are not going to let this war end as long as Hitler and his evil gang are running Germany and have a powerful military with which to strike London. Why are we not learning from a genius of foreign policy like Winston Spencer Churchill? Why have we not learned anything from him? What What do we think we're doing? Do, does Mr. Biden, whom I like, by the way, in many ways, why is Mr. Biden, what does he think we're going to get out of uh, kiss, kissing at? I don't want to use, use any dirty words, but, but bowing down to uh, bad, evil people. What does he think we're going to get out of it? On the live with Ben Stein. And um, speaking of the president and the upcoming uh, presidential race, uh, how would you uh, size things up with the some of the big polls showing uh, former President Trump would defeat uh, President Biden if the election were held today? Well, I think it's kind of interesting. Mr. Trump has done something that's fascinating. He has become a different person in this uh, go-round. He's become much calmer, uh, what shall I say, less confrontational, 
uh, less, uh, well, loud person than he has been in the past. And he just is Mr. Mr. Trump. I didn't realize it. The American people don't want to be pushed around. And he's going to say, I'm not going to start any wars. The Arabs, the Muslims, the terrorists have already started the war. But we're not going to get pushed around. America is called America for a reason. We don't let ourselves get pushed around. And uh, if you want to push a country around, try pushing one of your own countries around. The U.S. is not going to stand for it. Of course, the economy everyone on everyone's mind here. Um, I'm sure you spent the whole day reading the Beige Book that came out today from the uh, Federal Reserve. Um, looks like economic growth came in uh, surprisingly strong in the third quarter. The Beige Book, though, of the survey of economic conditions around the country showed mostly weaker economic activity and, and easing demand for labor compared to a month ago, uh, for example. Uh, what's your view of how things are going here at the moment? Well, it's kind of interesting. Uh, we had a fantastic breathtaking labor shortage for most of the year uh, that has eased off quite a bit there is still though quite a big labor shortage uh, you try finding skilled hard-working people to hire to work for you it's not going to be easy uh, and also we are seeing a considerable slacking of uh, fuel prices any kind of petroleum based uh, or even gold based prices uh, amazingly enough uh, we seem to have passed the peak of inflation, and uh, that would be a wonderful thing if true. Is it true? I don't know. It would be unusual if it happened, but eventually all inflations end. My father, whom we've often mentioned on your wonderful program, used to say all inflations end, and this one is ending too. Uh, I think little by little, it's not going to be a drastic ending. It's not going to be like nuclear war, as, as Mr. Bush would call it. Uh, but uh, uh, the inflation is easing, and uh, uh, whatever the beige book says, uh, I think the fa every consumer in America and every man or woman who's putting uh, gasoline or electricity in his car or her car knows uh, things are slacking uh, down quite a bit about uh, prices. It's a miracle. I'm not quite sure why it's happening, but it's a miracle, and let's be thankful for it. On the live with Ben Stein, interesting, just as uh, inflation is supposedly easing, we see gold uh, on near all-time high here at uh, $2,066 an ounce. Breathtaking, and I don't understand that either. Uh, a long time ago, really, really long time ago, Frank, your humble servant, moi, wrote a novel about a hyperinflationary catastrophe uh, similar to what happened in Germany, in Weimar, Germany, in the early 20s. Uh, and the story was that uh, turned out that uh, China uh, was doing something to stimulate prices. Uh, but then uh, when China stopped doing it, the inflation eased off. Is China easing off on uh, whatever it did to create inflation? We don't know. We don't know if it's even within the power of a single country to uh, create and then uh, back down on inflation. There are great many mysteries in the world of economics that we don't know about, don't know the answer to. But what we do know is let's be thankful. Let's be thankful every time we pass by that glorious, wonderful uh, art treasure or gas station that's near our house in Beverly Hills. And then you see the prices of uh, gasoline have gone way down. Let's be thankful for the fact that we can actually get them halfway decent labor uh, to work for us without having to pay uh, highway robbery prices. Let's be thankful for that. On the other hand, I, I today, your humble servant, just discovered that a company in which I had made a small investment, not a large investment, but you'd have to buy a small car, it turned out to have been a total scam. The whole thing was a ripoff. Uh, nobody in the government did anything whatsoever to protect us investors. And uh, I guess it's going to be up to me and maybe a few other investors to sue to see uh, what we can get out of this the wreckage of this damn thing. But where's the government? Where's Mr. Biden that was promising he's going to take care of uh, the little guy? And I don't see him anywhere around. I don't see anybody from the government anywhere around. And uh, I've been going through the uh, Internet all afternoon along with my wonderful uh, capable assistant, Jeff, and uh, we don't see a darn thing about the government lifting a finger to protect those investors. That's not a good thing. When we look 
the government's supposed to be helping us, not not ignoring us. On the live with Ben Stein, we're having a Frank and Stein uh, conversation here live on 790 KBC. And let me ask you this. Um, I know you're a, a big fan of uh, Warren Buffett and his right-hand man departed yesterday, uh, Charlie Munger, at the age of uh, 99. Uh, did you ever have any interactions with uh, Charlie Munger? A lot of attributes uh, today to uh, that uh, great investor. I had some in the sense of my wonderful friend, Phil DeMuth, probably as smart an investment advisor as there is on, in Southern California or maybe anywhere in California, uh, followed him closely and uh, did very well with him. I, uh, I did not follow him closely. I probably should have. But I figure that if Mr. Buffett thought he was in, thought he walked on water, he probably walked on water. Uh, and uh, we shall miss him. Uh, he had one of the biggest houses I've ever seen in Los Angeles in Hancock Park. And uh, I hope that whoever gets it now is going to not is not going to tear it down. But we'll leave it to a as a monument to a gilded age. Wow, a lot of old money there in Hancock Park. Uh, Charlie Munger uh, among them. That is really something. And, and of course, uh, we always appreciate your uh, amazing um, experience uh, and expertise. And uh, you're obviously a tremendous economic, uh, political, and um, market historian and, and uh, expert on uh, trade policy as well. Famously, uh, Smoot Hawley during uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I'm not sure if Ferris Bueller's Day Off is on the, the holiday uh, movie list, but... Um, I'm sure after hearing this conversation, people will be interested in in revisiting it. Uh, ben Stein, uh, have you have you taken the role yet today? I haven't, but I, I now that you're here, I better start. Adams, Adam Lee, Adamowski, Butler, Bueller, 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 and uh, that's my taking of the role for today. Excellent. And then, of course, you have to add Frank, and then somebody uh, has to say... Frank Motek, exactly that. That kid is a bad kid. I don't know what uh, happened to him. I wonder if his parents know that he's uh, playing hooky every uh, few days. Frank, and then, of course, right after that, Stein. Frank and Stein. Yes. Well, Frank and Stein is always here, because Frank and Stein, Stein loves school. A lot of kids don't like school, but uh, Stein loves school. Absolutely. I taught school. I taught school. I loved teaching school. It's one of the best jobs there is. You taught at Pepperdine, right? And, and where else? I, I taught at American University in Washington, D.C. and at the UC San Diego. And uh, I'm, uh, I, I loved teaching. In fact, uh, I often wish I had just uh, stayed uh, back uh, in the groves of academia. But uh, interestingly enough, uh, when I was teaching at UC Santa Cruz, the uh, uh, highest administrative official of the part of the college where I taught was a wild racist and anti-Semite, and uh, that was what made me leave. And uh, I know that universities don't like to be thought of that way, but there's a real question. Where where does this explosion of anti-Semitism come from in the uh, universities and colleges of America? That That's a kind of creepy thought of thought. Absolutely. Well, we got a lot to talk about here, Ben. Thank you very much uh, for taking the call live with us here tonight. Uh, we wish you a wonderful rest of the evening there in Malibu and, and uh, enjoy the uh, the sights there of the ocean and uh, look forward to speaking with you again very soon. Enjoy the holiday season and hope to uh, speak with you again. We'll have another Frankenstein uh, conversation as needed coming up very soon. Sooner and better, Frank. Sooner and better. Yes, sir. Absolutely, Ben. Thank you very much for taking the call here tonight. That's the one and only Ben Stein with us live here tonight on Motac on Money on 790 KBC. Folks, people like you and me have our ear to the ground at all things business. We like to be informed and indeed well prepared. And as important as finance is, I want you to have a plan in case you're hit by someone not paying attention to the road or running a red light, you name it. Thinking ahead serves us well. And even still, we can get caught off guard as people are so focused on their destination that they might not have a plan if they're in an accident that's not their fault. That's why I encourage you to put my friend, Attorney Clark Fielding's number in your phone, 833-88-SHARK. That's the number. So if you're in an accident, you'll be ready with your strategy to make Clark Fielding your very first call. Fielding Law aims for the highest possible settlements, considering you might need long-term care, rehab, compensation for lost wages, and any ongoing physical or emotional pain. So if you're hurt in any kind of accident, call for a free consultation with Fielding Law. You can trust them. They're honest, respected, and your strategy in case you get into that unexpected accident. Motorcycle, truck, pedestrian, scooter, hit-and-run, boating, or bike accidents, you name it. The number to call, 833-88-SHARK. 
That's 833-88-SHARK or go to ClarkTheSharkLaw.com. Seven ninety KBC welcomes you guessed it Brian Adams coming to the Honda Center January twenty eighth. Tickets are on sale now at Ticketmaster.com and right now caller nine wins at one eight 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 seven ninety five two two two. You get a pair of tickets to the show furnished by Live Nation. Brian Adams coming to the Honda Center January twenty eighth. Call now call caller nine wins one eight 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 seven ninety five two two two. Mixed finish for the stock market today with just one more trading day left in the month of November and it's turning out to be the best month of the year. The Dow up 83 points at 35,417. The S&P 500 up. Let me change that because we did see the market up earlier, but at the close, the Dow up just 13 points at 35,430. The S&P 500 pulling back four points at 4551. And the NASDAQ down 23 at 14,258. The Dow was up around 150 points early on. Disappointing reading uh, on that Beige Book uh, survey of economic conditions around the country today which came in mostly weaker than most analysts had expected. Earlier, the market had rallied, and the Dow was up more than 100 points after the latest report on the economic growth showed the economy grew at a rate of 5.2% in the third quarter. That came in above expectations of 5% and above the previous estimate of 4.9%. The price of gold right now hovering at around $2,066, near its all-time high. Oil is at the highest we've seen in a couple of weeks. As tensions rise in the Middle East, up $1.45 at $77.86 a barrel. And the yield in the 10-year note, which impacts the fixed-rate mortgage rates out there, now at 4.25%. Now the latest news for you here on 790 KBC. Motaka Money continues here on 790 KBC. Good evening. New readings on the economy. That Fed Beige Book survey of economic conditions around the country coming out today showing mostly weaker economic activity nationwide. Meanwhile, the latest reading on the economic growth came in a bit better than expected. So some uh, conflicting signals here. Let's really find out what's going on out there on the uh, Main Street economy tonight. Let's bring in business leader Mark Wilbur, founding member and former chairman of L.A. BizFed, the Los Angeles Business Federation, the voice of business in Los Angeles, president and CEO of Employers Group and former associate dean of the USC Marshall School of Business. Mark Wilbur, thank you very much for taking the call with us here this evening. Hi, Frank. Great to be back on. Fantastic. Great to have you with us here. And um, since you are with the movers and shakers there at, at LA BizFed, um, what is the buzz about uh, what's happening uh, these days? You know, it's interesting. There's a lot of things going on. Of course, you know, we have that, uh, you know, we just testified, the BizFed group did, and for the 2045 County Climate Action Plan. And I thought that was interesting because, you know, they're asking for a density of 300 jobs per acre. Now, that may, I know it's 2045, it just seems like a long way off, but what people don't realize is that the way government works, initiatives and plans start getting put in place that start spending our money uh, far in advance of that. And the problem with 300 jobs um, per acre, that density is, is not only outrageous and extraordinary, it's, it's not even uh, really doable given how many uh, plan areas there are. Do you realize, Frank, there's only eight of the 810 planning zones that L.A. County covers. There's only eight of them that have 300 jobs uh, per acre. I mean, so you're talking about, like, I don't even know whether they be quintupling the, uh, the number of jobs. The average is 20, and that would just devastate uh, a lot of businesses, a lot of land uh, space. And where are we going to house these people, Frank? We already have a housing crisis. Where are these people going to live? Well, wow. well, that, thanks for highlighting this because uh, people may not be uh, aware of this, but I see LA BizFed has taken a, uh, a leading role in uh, speaking up about this. Uh, the LA yeah. County um, 2045 Climate Action Plan, as it's being called, uh, proposing uh, 300 jobs per acre. I've never even heard such a measurement um, or putting a requirement in uh, to have a certain number of jobs or per acre. Is this something new? I, I've never heard of such a thing. Well, you know, it's, you know, we're in the business of using numbers and leveraging uh, data and uh, economics and statistics to try and drive behavior and votes and all sorts of things like that. That's what politics and, uh, and business and stuff collide on all the time. But this is such an outrageous number that the impact from trying to respond to this would 
devastate certain uh, areas of the economy, devastate um, circumstances. I mean, I can't even imagine what the, the, the deficit would be in housing to try and meet that number. I mean, if you think we have a deficit now, I can't even imagine what the extrapolated number would look like for that. I haven't seen that number yet. I'm sure it's uh, somewhere buried in a report that I haven't seen or some footnote, but um, that, that number alone should put an end to this discussion. On there live with Mark Wilbur from LA BizFed, and I see only two people testified at that recent hearing on this issue, including your uh, Sarah Wilfong from BizFed. So uh, thanks uh, to Sarah and everybody there at LA BizFed for uh, being the voice of business yeah. at that hearing and, and speaking up about this. And some, certainly something now that it's on our radar screen we'll, we'll have to keep an eye on, uh, which, of course, yeah. business is already under big pressure given everything that's uh, going on um, and you've had an uphill fight trying to make uh, L.A. more business friendly. Uh, where where do things stand uh, at this point? Well, you know, it's always the toughest job in the world to follow Ben Stein. I'm just going to tell you that right away. OK, so, <laughs> you know, I, I can't match fame of Ferris Bueller and all that. So um, but I can tell you, though, the Fed Beige Book conflict with what the reported actual economic growth is. Uh, I thought that was very interesting, but. I think the problem is that, you know, the, the devil's in the details, Frank, as, as you know, um, and bigger cities are having a lot tougher time right now dealing uh, with a lot of these economic trends that are going on. And there's, you know, prices are still high. Prices have been so high that even though, as Ben pointed out, a few things have dropped, there's still extraordinary levels, everything from just rent that people are paying to even some areas of groceries, not all things have dropped. There's just a certain segment of things that have dropped. And you know, you know the deal, Frank, you know, with economics, you can push those numbers around all you want to, to try and show some kind of uh, benefit. So it is what it is. 300 jobs per acre. Do, do they expect to plant jobs? Or, I mean, I've never heard of this. I can't get over it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, and, and the thing is, she asked for the right. Sarah Wilfong, who is just extraordinary, just one of many amazing people. As you know, you've had Kevin Harbour on and others, and, and of course, led by uh, Tracy Hernandez. The, uh, she asked for the right thing. You know, we need a detailed economic analysis and report of exactly what these impacts are going to be. Because, you know, until you start actually looking at the real numbers and the consequences of those numbers, then people really can't rise up. And that's maybe that's why there was only two people testifying. But the problem is, if you don't get out in front of these things fast, uh, these things can get momentum in City Hall. And you want to make sure that they've got a tether on them and that people are looking at it. Coming off the hot labor summer here, I remember when uh, BizFed was first uh, founded. Um, remember, I used to talk to David Fleming uh, quite a bit. Uh, you were right there with David when the organization was founded, along with Tracy and others. And and uh, yeah. the L.A. Business Federation, what represents um, about 420,000 uh, employers here in the Los Angeles area and about 5 million employees and all of the uh, business groups and all of that. And I remember it was established to uh, go eye to eye with the unions, right? Um, what are your thoughts about this hot labor summer and where things stand at this point? Well, it, it's interesting. You know, we still uh, have some ripple effects and some of these strikes uh, going on uh, even now. And, you know, the shakeout from these things, you know, even though you get a labor agreement, doesn't mean that the shakeout is uh, over at all, because there's a ripple effect to everything. I mean, if you increase the costs on a business, there's going to be consequences to those costs. There will be cuts that instead of maybe having 12 people in a particular sitcom, maybe there's only eight. Uh, all these kinds of things have an impact. Because at the end of the day, they're employing also thousands of other people and other jobs in those uh, studios and businesses and hotels and what have you. So, you know, it's it's moving, you know, it's moving the chess pieces around. And uh, so, yeah, you can settle an agreement, you can get that in place and people can be happy. But then it impacts other things, the rate of hiring, the amount of expansion, the maybe cutbacks in construction. Uh, those things all have a place and a role when you strike a deal. And so we haven't seen what the ripple effect is going to be uh, to the entertainment industry at this point because they just signed it, you know, not too long ago. 
Right. Well, Mark, thank you very much for taking the call tonight. We wish you and everyone at BizFed all the very best for the holiday season. Mark Wilbur, founding member and former chairman of L.A. BizFed, the L.A. Business Federation, president and CEO of Employers Group and former associate dean of the USC Marshall School of Business. Mark, thanks again for taking the call here tonight. You bet. Thanks for having me on, Frank. Thanks a million. Thank you very much. And right out to the freeways we go now on 790 KBC. Friends, you know, people like you and me have our ear to the ground on all things business. We like to be informed and indeed well-prepared. As important as finance is, I want you to have a plan in case you're hit by someone not paying attention to the road. Thinking ahead serves us well, and even still, we can get caught off guard as people are so focused on their destination that they might not have a plan if they're in an accident that's not their fault. Think about it. That's why I encourage you to put my friend, Attorney Clark Fielding's number, in your phone. Do it now. The number is 833-88-SHARK. So if you're in an accident, you'll be ready to go with your strategy to make Clark Fielding your very first call. Fielding Law aims for the highest possible settlements, considering you might need long-term care, rehab, compensation for lost wages, and any ongoing physical or emotional pain. So if you're hurt in any kind of accident, call for a free consultation with Fielding Law. You can trust them. They're honest, respected, and your strategy in case you get into that unexpected accident. Motorcycle, truck, pedestrian, scooter, hit and run, boating, or bike accidents, you name it, the number to call is 833-88-SHARK. That's 833-88-SHARK, or go to ClarkTheSharkLaw.com. Motacle Money continues here in 790 KBC. Shocking crime in the Mid-Wilshire area of Los Angeles. A homeowner was shot and killed in his own home in the Mid-Wilshire area. The suspect arrested in the case, a homeless woman who's now being held on murder charges with bail set at $3 million. Let's bring in former L.A. City Council member, the Honorable Dennis Zine, longtime LAPD sergeant, retired now and current LAPD reserve officer with more than 55 years of service to the City of Angels. Dennis Zine, thank you very much uh, for joining us here. Give us an You're update welcome, on how you see things here on this uh, crime blotter here with this uh, terrible crime um, right in the heart of the city. Well, it's continuing, Frank. Crime is continuing. The LAPD numbers are reducing the number of officers. They're now at 8,970 LAPD officers, all ranks from the chief down to the recruit in the academy. And I'll remind our listeners that in 2018, there were 10,057 officers on the Los Angeles Police Department. They went from 10,057 to 8,970, which means a delay in responding to calls, fewer officers out there handling calls, and jeopardy for the public. There's no question that crime continues and grand theft auto and shoplifting, et cetera, and serious crimes, murder, et cetera. Those crimes are continuing. People need to be cautious. And now with the holiday season, people want to go shopping. If you're going to go shopping, go with someone. If you're going to go shopping at night, use extreme caution. Park your vehicle in the lit area and be with someone. Don't go by yourself. It's very dangerous. Shoplifting is continuing. Muggings are continuing. Uh, we know that murders are continuing. The bottom line is you need to use extreme caution. The LAPD is doing everything it can. LA County Sheriff's doing everything it can. But they don't have number of resources, bodies on the street, to really do what they need to do to provide safety. And I've heard numbers of staggering numbers in January when there is a number of people retiring. And I'm not going to give you the numbers, but I've heard those numbers are staggering. How many people have already put in to retire in January, which is, what, a month away? We're going to be in a, in, a, in a crisis situation, so people need to be cautious. But crime continues in Los Angeles. LAPD is doing what resources it has to do to address those situations. But the caution is paramount. And I want to comment on one issue that uh, was in the news about an individual has a CCW issued by the county of Los Angeles and gotten a shooting when an indiv individual's um uh, confronted him at his residence and he fired his weapon and it was investigated and they say they pulled his ccw well the reason they pulled the ccw is the weapon he was armed with was not registered as a ccw when you have a ccw carry can see a weapon you have to note what i mean not i mean what kind of gun with the specific gun serial number etc that you're going to be carrying when you carry something other than what you're licensed to carry then you've got a problem. That's the true situation on that. And a lot of people say, well, I have a CCW. If I use it, am I going to lose my permit? No. Need to follow the rules. And the rules say you have this weapon, this is what you can use, and nothing else. But the bottom line is caution is paramount. Whether you go shopping, whether you go out to dinner, whatever the case may be, we know crime is continuing in Los Angeles. And I must comment that our district attorney, George Gascon, is not doing what needs to be done to maintain safety in the county of Los Angeles, not just the city, but the county of Los Angeles. So we've got problems in our hand. 
holiday season coming around. We wish everyone a very happy season and are out shopping. Use extreme caution. If you can shop in the daytime or in daylight, that's much better than shopping in the evening hours. Especially don't go by yourself. On the air live with the Honorable Dennis Zine. And I remember a report um, getting back to uh, crime and, and homelessness, including this uh, tragedy where somebody... Uh, Apparently, a homeless a woman uh, shot and killed a homeowner um, in the uh, Mid Wilshire area. I recall a report some time ago uh, from the LAPD that said most homeless involved crime is violent. Uh, Dennis Zine, um, what yes. are your thoughts about that uh, component and, and what just happened uh, recently here? Well, that, that's true. And we know we had another shooting last night uh, downtown, uh, at having dinner at a restaurant. They think that was a targeted attack. But clearly, that, that happens. And that's why I caution people to be extremely cautious where you go. Just don't go out wandering down the neighborhood or going to the shopping center or doing whatever you think is appropriate without using extreme caution. And I don't want to make you paranoid, but if you want to stay alive, you have to use a little paranoia so you will stay alive and won't be the next victim. Uh, not just a robbery, but worse than a robbery. We have carjackings. You, you name the crime, and we have it here in the City of the Angels. And I think the Angels have left Los Angeles, and we try to bring them back by having a safe environment for everyone within the region of Los Angeles City and County. And it's a real challenge to do that when you don't have sufficient resources. And clearly, with the number of officers that are within LAPD, we do not have sufficient numbers. 8970 is not a proper number to handle. And they're talking about a seven-minute response time. When you call 911, if they answer quickly, which is uh, oftentimes not occurring anymore, it used to be the case, but not much anymore, they, uh, they want to get to the call within seven minutes. A lot of things can happen in seven minutes, so keep that in mind. If you call 911, you get an immediate answer on the 911 and expect a unit there in seven minutes. Seven minutes is a long time when you're frightened and your life's in danger. So you need to use caution, be a little paranoid, and uh, use a lot of common sense, especially during this holiday season. And we've seen the headlines that say uh, crime is down. Uh, reported crime is probably down, right, Dennis Zine? Since um, nowadays when you call the police, they say, well, just... Go and fill out, uh, go online uh, and fill out a report uh, online. And many people may not even uh, bother to do that at this point. Well, the, the, there's no question, Frank, that most people, when they're a the victim of a crime, uh, they think, I wouldn't say most, many people, they think, well, it doesn't really matter. No one's going to investigate it. Nothing's going to happen. I don't want to file an insurance claim. My insurance rates will go up, et cetera. Uh, so if, if they actually reported all the crime that would occur, the numbers would be totally staggering out of this world. But the ones that are reported, like the homicides, uh, hopefully those are reported. The grand theft autos, those are reported. But uh, when you when you look at grand theft autos, those numbers keep increasing, and the crime continues. Every single crime that occurs, you should make a report. Oftentimes, you got to make it online. Doesn't matter. Make the report. Those DR numbers, Department of Reference numbers, that's what they go by when they put these statistics out, which go to the FBI to show how safe it is in your community, in your neighborhood, in your city. So people say, oh, my car was broken into. I don't make a crime report. Uh, that the, lap was stolen, the laptop was stolen. Whatever the case may be. Yeah. Dennis Sign, thank you very much for that update. We wish you and everyone there a great holiday season. And thank you very much again for that valuable information tonight to keep us safe. The Honorable Dennis Sign, former L.A. City Council member, longtime LAPD sergeant and current LAPD reserve officer, more than 55 years of service to the city of Los Angeles. Thank you again, Dennis Zine, for joining us live here tonight. Stay tuned now for the 790 KBC News Blitz with Royal Oaks. I'll be back again tomorrow evening at the 5 o'clock hour with Motec on Money on 790 KBC. The football season is underway, and Believe Podcasts are talking about it. When he went home and went to sleep, Michael Parsons was just terrorizing him. Believe has podcasts covering all 32 professional teams and many of your favorite college teams, too. And to be only producing 15 points a game, that's something that is definitely disheartening. Sideline to sideline, end zone to end zone. As a quarterback, I would expect him to be acting like that. Take the accountability. Put that on yourself. Don't put it on your teammates. Search B-L-E-A-V Podcasts wherever you listen.